Okay, moving along. Smetting 15 degree 275cc ported LS3 monster heads. I'm not going with LS7 heads on this build because Vin's biggest concern that he expressed to me was he wanted it to be absolutely and utterly reliable. In my opinion, on an extremely aggressive LS7 12 degree setup, especially in a road race car that's going to see a lot of RPM for a long time, I don't like how fast the valve guys wear out. But 15 degree setups are proven to be more reliable. So we're going to do our smetting 15 degree 275 head. This bad boy flows about 380 CFM at 600 lift. And it's going to have an amazing torque curve for this 441. So we're going to assemble it with some really nice hollow stem intake valves and exhaust valves. These intake valves are actually lighter than the exhaust valve, even though they have much bigger diameter valve heads on them. And you always want to lighten up the valve train because it's just less mass for the valve spring to control. So the valve spring has a much easier job keeping everything nice and stable inside these heads. These are a 2.165 valve with a 1.6 exhaust. I'm going to get these assembled with our dual spring kit and titanium retainers. I have another video talking about coil bind clearance, so I'll link that up here. I know these springs are gonna work great for this setup. So I'm gonna get these heads stuffed with the good parts and then we'll put them on the motor. I actually lied. Before we put the heads together, we're gonna go ahead and check and find our push rod length as well as measure our piston to valve clearance in this combination. So, because we're gonna do piston to valve, on a hydraulic roller setup. We're gonna have our lightweight checker springs installed. See that? All right. I'm gonna throw in some bolts just around the cylinder that we're working on. And just lightly zip these down. Okay, so first we're gonna find our push rod length inside the engine. I'm going to start with an educated guess of where I think I need to be. But first, I need to make sure I'm on the correct rotation of the cam. I'm going to start at a dimension that I think is going to be pretty much there. Okay, at the moment my push rod is way too short. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit longer. All right, right there. All right, so our push rod, well, the checker push rod is currently 7.58. I know these Johnsons like to run at 35. So now we know what length push rod I need. Now we'll check our valve clearance, the Jacob way. Where's top dead center on this cylinder? Oh yeah, we have absolute miles of P to V. I can pretty much hang the valve way open and we never even hit the piston. That's awesome. I'm not even gonna check the exhaust, I'm that confident. You can hate me in the comments, but after building enough of these motors, I guarantee you it's nowhere near.
All right, everybody, that wraps up pretty much as far as I can go for now. I've got the push rods already on the way. I decided on a 7.625 for this setup. And then after that, we will be making some noise. So once the push rods come in, we'll go over the valve train, get it buttoned up, and then we'll seal up everything with our oil pan, timing cover, and valley cover. And then we'll be on the dyno. It's going to be sick. A few things have changed since last time. We are running our four corner steam vent kit and we did put the valley cover on. Right now we are ready to seal up the bottom end. So we're going to install the timing cover, we're going to install our stroker oil pan, and then we'll assemble the valve train. Here's the oil pan that we're going to run on this motor. This is an LS swap oil pan that we have that's going to work perfect in his BMW chassis. This fits a lot of popular chassis actually. It's very compact and it will clear a huge stroke like we're running. And we also added an aluminum trapdoor baffle plate to help keep the oil under control on a road course. That way we don't have any windage problems. So I'm going to put the timing cover on first and then we'll get this oil pan popped on. These LS timing covers have no dowels so they can they have a lot of movement in the bolts. So to make sure that this timing the front seal is centered on the crankshaft, they make these really cool spacers that simulate the harmonic balancer. So just pop that in there. Make sure it's level with the oil pan rails. And then you can zip this down. Here's one last look at the rotating assembly of this beast. To recap, we have a true LS7 GM block with the doweled billet steel main caps. We have our Smetting 4340 forged 4.125 stroke crankshaft, fully internally balanced. We have our Smetting Power Adder H-Beam 4340 forged connecting rods with ARP 2000 rod bolts. And making all of that work are some beautiful custom JE 13.2 to 1 compression forged pistons. So, get the oil pan on next and then we can finish the valve train. This oil pan kit does come complete with the gasket and all the hardware you need. Okay, next we have our Smith Brothers custom push rods. And these have a really nice radius tip so that at really high lift the push rod does not hit the rocker arm. These are a 5 16 push rod with a 1 16 thick wall. And these are the perfect length to give us the perfect preload on our Johnson lifters inside of this beast. We get these dropped in and then we'll install the shaft mount rocker system. Right now I'm just making sure the push rods are all seated correctly in their lifter cups. You cannot see them on an LS engine, so you really gotta be you really have to pay attention and be careful. So a couple of these were not totally seated in the lifter. There we go. Now this is the rocker system we're gonna use on this motor. Normally an LS rocker is by itself and it just has the one bolt holding it down. Whereas this shaft mount system ties two rockers together on a tool steel shaft and then adds even more bolts to hold everything together onto this one big billet piece of another steel shaft. This way the rocker arms are basically all of the bolt, there's just so many more hardware holding it all together. That way it's super stable and we don't lose any lift due to deflection of the rocker arms moving around under the heavy spring pressure. Again, because these are CNC ported smetting LS3 heads. The port job actually goes through the intake rocker bolt holes. So you need to put a little bit of PTFE thread sealant on those bolts.
here you can really see just how many bolts there are holding down one rocker arm. This valve train is going to be so stable and perfect for those high RPM sustained moments when it's just sitting there over 7,000 RPM. It's going to be awesome. So there's the long block buttoned up, ready to go. We do have two intake manifolds that we're actually going to test on this engine to find out which one is the best for the application. We're going to start with this one, which has a larger center plenum and shorter runners. Generally, this manifold will support a higher RPM torque curve compared to this manifold, which has a smaller plenum and a longer runner. That's going to create greater air velocity going through the engine and will promote a broader torque curve. So I think this one is going to be the final winner for this engine's application, the one over there. But we're going to start with this one first, dyno it, figure out that peak power, the peak torque, and the average torque and power for this RPM range. And then we'll swap to this one and compare them because this is a road race engine. So we want to have a really strong, broad torque curve coming out of the corner and also to where he can be at any RPM, punch it, and it's going to take off like a rocket ship. So I'm going to get the short one installed, waiting on the balancer to come in for the serpentine kit. And then it's dyno time. So recap again real quick, 441 cubic inches, 13.2 to one compression, straight E85, big smetting CNC LS3 cylinder heads, the 275cc port. The camshaft is 254 intake and 267 exhaust duration. It is a hydraulic roller. We are running Johnson lifters. This is just gonna be such a badass engine. I cannot wait to get it on the dyno. I can't wait to hear, let you guys hear how radical this dude's going to sound. See y'all next time.